My name is Tom Tierney. I um, am a conservation agriculture farmer in Prosperous, Nace, County Kildare. I farm 200 acres of my own on my family farm and I farm an additional 200 acres in conservation agriculture practices. That is no-till farming, reduced fungicides, reduced nitrates and nitrogen and um, zero insecticides. We're growing a, a range of crops, uh, beans, oilseed rape, winter barley, spring barley, winter wheat, spring wheat and oats. Since 2016 I've been no-till, so no plough, no cultivations. I seed directly into the preceding uh, stubble crop. So basically I have a machine that cuts a slot in the ground, places the seed and closes the slot, which is minimum uh, disturbance to the soil biome and in that way then improving soil organic matter and soil health. So when you, when you plant the companion crop with the rape crop, the first variety that will outgrow the rape will be buckwheat. And while, while the rape is this height, the buckwheat will be this height. And so you won't get pigeons grazing it because they think it's buckwheat and not rape. And then when the first frost hits in November, that buckwheat will die back and you'll be left with the rape crop and the remaining companions. Those roots will be harvesting and mining those minerals and making them plant available uh, to their own plant. But when you terminate these plants then, those minerals become available to the remaining crop that you've left, which is your oilseed rape crop. So these are field beans. The beans are used in animal feed as a protein substitute. Um, they're very high in protein. To no-till, it's almost out the gate with the combine and in the gate with the no-till drill. And I'll drill directly into the Harlem stubble that's left behind me from this crop. So the forestry is 30 acres. It was planted in year 2000, so it's 24 year old now. Um, it's 60% diverse woodland. That means 60% broadly, 40% Norway spruce. I decided that the best thing I could do would be to import a harvester head from Finland, which would fit on a 360 track machine. So last November I started harvesting Norway spruce. That involved just taking out racks. Every eight rows of trees take out a row and they'll become access for the next subsequent harvestings that I do in the years to come. I log the timber into tree ones, 3.1 meter lengths. And what I did then was I could drop off the harvester head and put on a grapple and attach a trailer to the digger uh, at the, 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 the dozer blade and I could take the trailer and the digger down the access line and load the timber that I had harvested onto the trailer for extraction. So the, the digger became a multi-purpose tool. It became a harvester machine and it became a forwarder, timber forwarder, all in one and all done by myself. And I think going forward, that's the way I'll approach it. I'll, I'll go for second thinnings and I'll take out a group of trees. And as I take out a group of trees, I'll plant new trees um, each time I remove a grouping and in that way it'll be a minimum disturbance, low impact approach to forestry harvesting. Better for the forestry and overall better for me to look at. Um, I mean we're standing on a forestry track here that I've extracted timber on and it looks like a normal pathway in, in, a, in a forest that you'd like to walk along. Standing looking into the wildflower meadow area that hasn't been farmed for the last 20 years. It has been in a rep scheme, one and two, and I think three, and then it was in two DLOS schemes before it then entered the pollinator EIP with Biodiversity Ireland. There's lots of flowering varieties, there's lots of grass varieties. It's just a haven for wildlife of all shapes and forms. To look at, it looks like a field of weeds, but actually when you go through it, there's lots of different species, um, and the only introduced species is the yellow rattle. So yellow rattle is uh, called meadow maker and what it does is it, it has an allopathic effect which prevents grasses from, from getting a stronghold or from growing too strong and over time the grasses will suppress a little bit and other wildflower species will populate. So you end up with, with less grass and more wildflower. Um, and more wildflower equals more pollinators. And you'll see that every time you come into this field, you'll see something different that you haven't seen before and that you won't see in any other field on the farm. The best thing 
for this field was the pollinator plan, the five-year pollinator plan. That transformed it because you had the knowledge from Biodiversity Ireland. Between us, we could, we could make the best use of this area and create a space for nature. The one thing that, that farmers could do is find an area on their farm where they could maybe um, surrender it to a wildflower meadow or a wild area, uh, um, a space for nature area, um, or maybe uh, plant a tree every year in your hedgerows, your existing hedgerows, uh, ash dieback and fire blight are killing trees and, and nat native trees and native hedgerows. We could um, plant a tree every year in a hedgerow uh, and over a 10 year period we, we could possibly combat the, the, the dieback that we're seeing. I think that would be a good thing. Mm -hmm.